it is 4.30, so we will go ahead and call to order the um, agenda session for uh, the Planning Commission meeting that will be taking place on Monday, June 27th. Uh, we, uh, this, this meeting is being held both virtually and in person uh, here in City Hall Room 111. Um, again, we are setting the agenda for Monday. So we do have a sizable agenda for you all, but a few items we are going to be recommending for consent, so we'll see uh, if we can try to get this a little shorter. But with that, uh, under the... Uh, We've got, um, on the consent agenda, we've got the approval of the minutes. Looks like we might need to make an adjustment there. But we've got the approval of the minutes from the June 13th Planning Commission meeting. And then we've got, um, first item is ADM 2022-030. This is a, an administrative item submitted by Rindle Management for properties located at 1540 West Markham Road. The properties are zoned RSF4, residential single family four units per acre and contained approximately 1.73 acres. The request is to extend the approval for CUP 20-7046 for a cluster housing development, and Gretchen Harrison is the planner on this one. Yes, uh, so this subject property is located northwest of Markham Road and Hornsby Drive. Um, you may be familiar with it. Um, a conditional use permit and a large scale development for a cluster housing development have previously been approved for this site, and um, basically the, ex the approval for this UP expired, and so they have come back through to request an extension of that. Um, staff is supportive of the extension. Um, they recently amended um, both their CEP and LSD to allow accessory dwellings within the cluster development, um, and they've had, just had some other delays that have prevented them from completing all of their work within the allotted time. Um, so we are supporting this extension. Um, we did not receive any public comment on it, and I can stand for any questions that you may have. Are there any questions on this? Okay, hearing none, uh, we will assume that's staying on consent. I'll move on to next item is VAR 2022-022. This is a variance submitted by Craft & Tull for property located at West Weir Road and Street K. The property is zoned RSF4, residential single family, four units per acre, and contains approximately 21.22 acres. The request is for a variance from the minimum street standard for Street K in the Magnolia Park subdivision, and Gretchen is the planner on this one. Yes, uh, so the property for this request is located, as Ms. Buster said, in the Magnolia Park subdivision um, in northwest Fayetteville, just west of Ruble Road. Um, they received approval for the latter phases of the subdivision, I believe, late last year. And um, as part of that approval, they were proposing to extend um, kind of a step out to the property um, northeast of the site. Um, and there were some issues with grading on to that property. Um, caused by extending the step out all the way to the property line. Um, so they have basically come through and requested a variance um, to allow them to uh, basically construct the step out a bit further away from the property line into the property. Um, so it would not be meeting the letter of the code, but um, they would be providing fee in lieu for the extension of the street in the future um, to the property line. Um, they have worked with our engineering division um, to craft conditions for this variance. Um, and. Um, both engineering and planning is supporting their request. Um, we did not receive any public comment for the variance, uh, but I could stand for any questions that you may have about this. Any questions? Okay, hearing none, uh, next is VAR 2022-029. This is a variance submitted by Cobb Brothers and Westfall Properties for property located at South Leffler, Way and South Finger Road. The property is zoned RSF4, residential single family, four units per acre, and contains approximately 53 acres. The request is for a variance from UDC 166.04 to split a parcel without existing sanitary sewer infrastructure in place. And Ms. Harrison is also the planner on this one. Um, you, know, you might be familiar with this property. It's located southwest of Lowe's, kind of in West Fayetteville on LK. Um, it was recently, a portion of it was recently rezoned, and then a conditional use permit was brought through for a um, RV park. Um, they are now looking to split the property um, right here into two lots, um, and this rear lot, um, actually both lots would not have access to sanitary sewer as is. Um, there's a main just west of the site on MLK and then north of the site along Finger Road um, that do not directly reach this property. Um, so in doing the lot split, they would be exacerbating a non-conformity and creating a lot without direct access to sewer. Um, 
So they are requesting a variance to provide easements, um, which would allow them to extend sewer at the time of development and not with the lot split. Um, the applicant for this variance has also worked with their engineering division to craft conditions of approval, which are included in the staff report for this item. Um, so both engineering and planning are supportive of their request, and I can stand for any questions that you may have. We did not receive any public comment on this item, though we did receive some inquiries from neighbors. Any questions on that one? Okay, hearing none. Uh, our next item on consent is CCP 2022-06. This is a concurrent plat submitted by Craft and Tall and Associates. Your property is located at 1127, 961, and 895 East Sparrow Circle. The property is owned RSF 8 to residential single family, eight units per acre, and contains approximately 0.94 acres. The request is for the concurrent plat of nine residential lots. Uh, so the applicant in this instance is uh, requesting to further subdivide uh, four existing lots in the uh, Creekside Meadows subdivision into nine resultant lots. Um, they had uh, received a letter of map reduction uh, from FEMA, which uh, altered the um, direction of the floodplain. So these lots are no longer encumbered by floodplain and they would like to build on them. So they are coming through to subdivide and create more lots. Uh, these uh, lots were already planned for in the overall development of the um, subdivision, um, but just couldn't be physically subdivided until um, that uh, letter of map reduction was received. They have that and they're looking to now basically further subdivide these. Uh, one point of um, nuance on this is that per our ordinances, typically when you subdivide land, you're required to dedicate street right of way in the amount of uh, as designated by the master street plan. Uh, they'll be coming forward with a second item on this um, at a subsequent planning commission meeting to uh, formally request a lesser dedication of right of way in this instance uh, that will ultimately have to be approved by city council. So um, you will see that on a subsequent agenda uh, for your consideration. Uh, staff will be recommending in favor of that lesser right of way de dedication request, uh, finding that um, they do face practical difficulties and have some level of embedded entitlement given that they had planned for uh, the overall number of lots when they created the subdivision. So again, that's a separate item, but one of nuance that's uh, related to this. Um, so we've not received any public comment on it and I can answer any questions you might have. Okay, hearing none, um, we will then move to our first item of unfinished business is VAR 22016. This is a variance uh, submitted by Atwell Group for property located at 1605 West Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. The property is zoned I-1 heavy commercial and light industrial and contains approximately 0.86 acres. The request is for variances to curb cut separation, right-of-way dedication, and sidewalk construction. Uh, the item was tabled uh, at the May 23rd meeting and then subsequently tabled at the June 13th meeting at the applicant's request. Uh, the applicant did not submit any additional supplemental items for the commission to consider at this time. Uh, staff was recommending, uh, as a reminder, staff was recommending partial approvals. Um, they were requesting multiple variances and we were not fully in support of all of them, but we're recommending approval of some. So uh, if you have any further questions on that, again, the applicant did not submit any additional supplementary information uh, and staff's recommendations are staying the same. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, hearing none, we'll go then to our first item of new business. This is ADM 2022-031. Uh, this is an administrative item submitted by DCI for property located at 2231 West Markham Road. The property is owned CPZD and contains approximately 6.8 acres. The request is for a major modification to the approved large-scale development. Uh, you're all likely familiar with the site. This is the site of the Pratt Place Inn and Barn. Uh, they received a large-scale development approval for this back in early 2021, uh, which involves uh, the addition, an addition to the barn structure, an addition to uh, the existing, or uh, some renovations on the existing home, uh, added hotel, and some additional um, cabins on the site. Uh, also with a, some associated parking. Uh, the developer has come forward with um, major modifications to this plan. Uh, their overall changes are essentially reducing the impact of the project to the site. So they've reduced uh, the amount of parking they're provide, 
they're providing. They've reduced the number of units in the hotel. Uh, they've reduced the number of uh, detention ponds uh, and also have increased the amount of tree preservation. So uh, oftentimes, uh, so staff, do, there is uh, some interpretation in our code uh, between things that are a minor modification or a major one. So oftentimes when, you know, the Zoning and Development Administrator has the ability to uh, administratively approve minor modifications, but in this instance, uh, because there were so many, so many changes being made and so many knock-on effects in multiple divisions needing review, uh, we felt that the appropriate uh, approving body for this instance was the Planning Commission to take a look at these changes. Um, staff does not find any issues and are recommending in favor of uh, of approval of the changes. They appear to be still meeting uh, relevant ordinances uh, and the overlying, overarching um, zoning district requirements. So we have not received any public comment on the item, but we have received a couple inquiries. Uh, it would be eligible for consent if the commission would be interested in placing it there. Would anybody have an issue with moving this to consent? I was about to ask the same question. Okay, move to consent then. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have ADM 2022-033. This is an administrative item submitted by Community by Design for property located at 3220 West Old Farmington Road. The property is zoned NC, Neighborhood Conservation, and contains approximately 20.4 acres. The request is to amend the conditions of approval of the CUP 2021-056, and Ryan Umberger is the planner on this item. Good afternoon. Um, you all are probably uh, very familiar with this site at this point. So this is on the north side of Old Farmington. It is the Southern Woods cluster development um, that we saw the large scale development for at the last planning commission meeting. Uh, this administrative item is a request to amend the conditions of the conditional use permit that's associated with the cluster housing development on the property. And it uh, relates to the required street improvements for the internal streets. Um, so this is, uh, essentially the, the exact same discussion that was had at the last planning commission meeting with the large scale development. Um, staff is recommending uh, denial of amending the conditional uh, use permit. So, so again, this is basically just the, the question of whether or not sidewalks should be six and a half feet wide versus six feet. Um, the uh, Staff is, is recommending that sidewalks are six and a half feet wide throughout the development, um, and the developer is, is requesting to amend it so that they're only six feet. Um, we did ask the applicant if, if uh, they wanted to withdraw this item after the approval of the large scale development, and they um, said that they wanted to keep the item on to have the, the conversation with the Planning Commission about the shy distance requirement. Uh, in the cross section and, and wanted to consider the context uh, with that requirement with the overall development. Um, we've not received any public comment on this and again staff is recommending a denial of the, the amendment and I can stand for any questions. Any questions about that? Uh, looks like uh, Jim Garlock has his hand raised. Commissioner Garlock? Did we lose you? Yes. Um, would this be possible to be put towards the end since there probably isn't a lot of comment on this and in the interest of other issues that might be on the commission that night, it seems like more of an internal discussion with the applicant. Could this be moved towards the end just out of curiosity? Um, we could. Uh, do other commissioners feel the same way or have thoughts on that? I'm fine with it either way. I'm okay. Okay. Uh, we can move that to the end. Uh, are you suggesting last item of new business? Yes, thank you. Okay. I think that might be a more efficient type of time for anybody that would like to talk on issues uh, from the other items in the packet. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. No I appreciate that flexibility, everyone. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, hearing none, uh, we'll move on. Uh, the next item has been withdrawn by city staff. Uh, we did find that this uh, did not need to be kept on the agenda 
per um, ordinance requirements for project extension, but uh, public notification did go out on it, which is why it's still listed on the agenda. Um, I'll go ahead and read the item. It's ADM 2022-034. Uh, it's an administrative item submitted by Rindle Management for properties located at 1540 West Markham Road. Properties are zoned RSF4, residential single family, and contained approximately 1.73 acres. Uh, the request is to extend the approval for LSD 2021-033 for a cluster housing development. Again, the reason this was withdrawn by city staff is because the applicant is making this request within a 12-month time frame, which allows for administrative project approval extensions. So you don't, won't be hearing that item uh, on Monday. Uh, the next item, VAR 2022-025, is a variance submitted by We Build Dex. For property located at 1679 South Cooper's Cove, uh, the property is zoned RSF4, four units per acre, or excuse me, residential single family, four units per acre, and contains approximately 0.31 acres. The request is for a variance allowing at least 12 feet closer to the stream side. Uh, staff is also going to be withdrawing this item because the applicant did not complete their public notification uh, requirements, or at least provide documentation that those not that requirement has been completed. So you will not be hearing this item either on Monday. Uh, next up is VAR 2022-028. This is a variance submitted by Damian Gallo or Gallo for property located at 335 South Combs Avenue. The property is zoned NC Neighborhood Conversation, Conservation and contains approximately 2.4 acres. The request is for a variance to section 168.10U of the Universal uh, Unified Development Code um, uh, and it's a uh, involving the provisions for flood hazard reduction. Alan Pugh is the engineer on this who will be discussing this item and he is present and I will turn it over to him. Mr. Pugh, if you are there. I am, sorry. Oh, there uh, you are. Second. Um, uh, this one's similar to one that we had seen um, previously, I believe and it's not too far from here on South College where uh, FEMA has uh, produced uh, some flood studies that they've yet to um, adopt. Um, staff has been able to review those flood studies, were comfortable with those, um, did not feel the need to have the uh, applicant uh, prepare another one. So uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, can this go on consent? This seems pretty straightforward. That was exactly what I was going to say. It, it certainly can. Thank you. I was going to offer it up. All right, thank you. Any other questions on that before we move on? Okay. Can that one go on consent? Uh, yes, that one will be placed on consent. Great, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, we've got VAR 2022-021. This is a variant submitted by AB Joint Ventures for property located at 4257 West Santa Fe Street. The property is zoned RIU, Residential Intermediate Urban, and contains approximately 0.13 acres. The request is for a variance from UDC 166.08 F2 and 166.23 C2 for access management and vehicular access requirements. And the planner on this is Ryan Umberger. Thank you. Um, this property is in West Fayetteville. It's on the west side of Rupal Road. Um, this is the town west subdivision. Um, the subdivision itself is located roughly a half mile north of uh, Rupal, the intersection of Rupal and MLK. Uh, the property is zoned to RIU, Residential Intermediate Urban, and contains about uh, 0.13 acres. Um, many of the uh, properties in this subdivision have been um, undergoing building permit approval, um, and, and that is where uh, the nature of this variance comes from. So the applicant is requesting uh, two variances to the Unified Development Code. The first is in our access management section. Um, and uh, the second is in the urban residential design standards for vehicle access requirements. Um, the applicant is, is proposing a, a driveway that extends uh, from Santa Fe Street rather than um, loading through the alley that you can see just immediately west of the lot there. Um, <clears throat> so, so basically the, um, the two variances, one is, is uh, to allow a curb cut within 50 feet of an intersecting street or driveway, and in this case, it is within both, uh, it's within 50 feet of both, uh, and a, a driveway that was approved on an adjoining property, and, and then the alley itself. Um, and then uh, the, the other requirement is that parking areas uh, be accessed by mid-block alleys whenever possible. Um, and and uh, 
this is just because they're proposing access directly onto Santa Fe rather than through the alley. Um, for, for both variances, we are recommending uh, denial of the variance requests, and we have not received any public comment on, on, a, uh, on the variance request, and I can stand for any questions. Uh, Commissioner Madden. Oh, sorry, Commissioner Madden, you have your hand raised? Um, yeah, I just was uh, wanting to double check. You, you're recommending denial, so does that mean that they have given no hardship or any other reason they just don't want to do it the way the code requires? Uh, essentially, yeah, that's the basis of staff's findings. Okay, thanks. Um, and to answer your question, Commissioner Winston, it, it's up to you all. Oftentimes, if staff is recommending denial, we, we might recommend that it stay off consent just to uh, open up discussion for it. No, I think you're right on that one. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions on that? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to VAR 2022-030. This is a variance submitted by Gavin Smith for property located at 212 North Crossover Road. The property is zoned RI-12, residential intermediate 12 units per acre, and contains approximately 0.6 acres. The requests are for variances to UDC 16608F2 and 16623C4 uh, for driveway separation and a variance for pedestrian access. And Ryan Umberger is the planner on this one as well. Sure. Um, so this property is in Southeast Fayetteville. Um, it is on North Crossover Road. It's approximately three quarters of a mile north of the intersection of Huntsville and Crossover. Um, the property is a 0.63 acre um, undeveloped lot and it's zoned RI 12 residential intermediate 12 units per acre. Um, the this, this property, there's a few kind of interesting features about this property. Um, so, so first and foremost, there's a significant amount of topography um, leading up from the right of way to, to where the buildable area on this lot is. Um, there's, a, there's, a, uh, there's actually three um, uh, large diameter gas, gas lines uh, that uh, bisect the property running north and south. Um, and then there's also just a, a pretty substantial amount of RDOT right-of-way uh, that makes up this property's frontage on crossover. Um, <clears throat> the applicant is requesting two variances. Um, one is uh, curb cut separation uh, distance to, to reduce the, the required curb cut separation distance uh, for a driveway on a regional high activity link street. Um, typically, those are required to be separated um, by a minimum of 250 feet from intersecting streets and driveways. Um, and the second variance is to waive a requirement that ground floor dwellings uh, adjacent to public streets have a visible pedestrian entry which connects to the public sidewalk. Um, staff is, is supportive of both variance requests. Um, subject to conditions, particularly for the pedestrian circulation um, variants. Um, so, so in general, kind of a, a bit of a nuance between the planning review and the, the engineering review of those is that typically if there, if there is a, a pedestrian entry, um, oh, well, the, there's a requirement, I suppose, for uh, parking lots to have a pedestrian circulation system. Um, and those are generally required to be ADA compliant. Um, and in this case, that would add a considerable amount of cost considering the grade. Um, so staff is recommending a condition that uh, a non-ADA compliant walkway um, at, at a minimum is provided, and that could be you know, stairs or, or edging alongside of the driveway. Um, but otherwise, we are supportive of, of both variance requests. And I can, we've not received any public comment on this one either, and I can stand for any questions. Do the commissioners have any questions about this? Ken, is one of the options that, that they could put a stairway between the landings on one of the, um, the, the switchbacks? I, I, think, I think they, they could. Um, and if you're referring to like the switchbacks that they have as an exhibit in the request letter, I, I think the nature of the variance request is that, that basically they're not providing that path that makes those switchbacks because of the cost that it would add to the project. Hopefully I'm understanding the nature of your question correctly. 
Yeah, I think so. I'll, I'll, I'll get into it. I might have more questions at the meeting. Sure. Uh, any other questions on that that staff can answer? Okay, hearing none, uh, we'll probably keep that one off consent, I would imagine. Um, okay, next up we have uh, VAR 2022-032. This is a variant submitted by Bates & Associates for property located at 824 South Curtis Did Avenue. We, did we skip number 13? Yeah. Oh, okay. sorry, did I miss one? Yeah, VAR uh, 2022 Oh, my, apolo my apologies. Um, I did, I completely skipped it. Uh, yeah, we'll go back to that. I'm sorry. VAR 20, so many, a lot of variances, guys. VAR 220027. This is a variance submitted by Anderson Engineering for property located at 4143 North Shiloh Drive. The property is zoned CS Community Services and contains approximately 7.4 acres. The request is for a variance to the driveway separation requirements. Uh, the applicant is also requesting a variance to cross access. Um, so, on this particular case, uh, the, uh, this is. Uh, to familiarize the site, a lot of people know this as the site of the old Hooters. Um, it's just south of the Northwest Arkansas Mall. Uh, the applicant is proposing to redevelop um, and to demolish the existing structure and redevelop a new one uh, with uh, associated parking uh, for a dentist office uh, primarily and then uh, another suite as well. Uh, so typically in these instances, um, because they're uh, developing a new primary structure on the site, they would be required to bring um, their access, their driveway, any non-conforming access uh, situation into compliance with our ordinance. So they have a non-conforming driveway uh, at the southern portion of their site, which uh, does not meet the separation distance requirements to the driveway to the south of it. Uh, there's, they're required to have at least 100 feet uh, on neighborhood Link Street, which Shiloh Drive is at that location. Uh, so staff is recommending in favor of the request at this time, um, uh, in the in this case, um, there uh, the city engineering found that Shiloh Drive doesn't necessarily operate as a neighborhood link street at this location, um, given that it actually will dead end and isn't likely to ever connect to Shiloh Drive to the north. So we don't anticipate that there would be a a, a dangerous traffic situation by leaving the drive way as it stands. Uh, secondly, there is a significant approximately four foot retaining wall uh, in between this property and the property to the south that would make cross access uh, difficult or potentially infeasible. Uh, so um, the, re the variance request is, is the two separate variance requests are somewhat related in that regard. Uh, the applicant is also proposing to eventually redevelop the property to the west. Um, so the area in question, this is the whole site in question, but the area in question with this is kind of the one acre that's easternmost. And then the applicant is again proposing to redevelop the property to the west. So um, staff agrees with their assertion that by potentially having both driveways there, it could uh, aid in um, site circulation when the property to the west ultimately gets developed. Uh, but one condition of approval that we'd like the commission to consider is making sure that the applicant have dedicated an access easement um, in between the two lots uh, with this development to make sure that connectivity is eventually maintained between those two properties. Um, again, we are recommending in favor of both variances. Um, uh, uh, the other Another reason is that we think that having the both driveways will allow for better site circulation uh, for, in potential, for potentially for emergency access. That um, cul-de-sac at the end of the road uh, is going to be altered with this development as well. So um, we think that, that uh, it, it may be better to have both driveways than to only have one for the long-term uh, plan for this area. So happy to answer any questions. We have not received any public comment, but we have received a couple inquiries about the overall development for the site. Um, but nothing in opposition or support. You yeah, see the, the access easement that you were talking about between the lots, did you mean between this lot and the lot to the north? Uh, lot to the west. Lot to the west. Okay, yeah. so uh, the, the, uh, those are two different lots. Right they now. are, yes, and will okay. and will continue to be. They, they came through and concurrent platted those uh, separately um, earlier this year. And is this eligible for consent? It is, yes. With that added condition, though, do we need to have it? Uh, that, that's my only reason why I would put that on consent if we have an additional condition that was not something that was on the application. We can we can leave it off or put it on either way. 
Uh, will the condition, uh, staff's condition ride with it if we put it on consent? It would, yes. And if the applicant's okay with that, I'm okay with doing that. Um, but let's, it's probably better to leave it off just to be sure. Okay, sorry. Uh, uh, that's okay. I think we can get through this pretty quickly, but just because of that one condition issue, that, that's my lone objection to keeping it off. Uh, my lone reason for keeping it off. Okay. I'm fine. I'm comfortable with that. Uh, any other questions or comments? Okay, uh, item number 15, this is VAR 2022-032. This is a variance submitted by Bates & Associates for property located at 824 South Curtis Avenue. The property is zoned RMF 24, residential multifamily, 24 units per acre, and contains approximately uh, 0.99 acres. Um, the request is for a variance to the master street plan standards. Uh, so this item would also be eligible for consent. So in this particular instance, um, it, uh, this project was approved with through the SIP process. Uh, it's going to be a 23 unit. Uh, two, uh, there's two multifamily structures that the applicant is proposing for a total of 23 uh, residential dwelling units. Um, the applicant uh, is dedicating ample right of way and plans to build uh, out the street improvements to the typical master street plan standards. Um, however, uh, it was determined through that process that the typical six foot sidewalk and six foot green space uh, would actually require a street narrowing of two feet, um, which would uh, be somewhat of a practical difficulty at this location and could potentially pose a safety issue uh, for uh, site distances and whatnot along South Curtis Avenue. So staff is recommending that um, the applicant build the, to uh, a six foot sidewalk and a four foot green space. Um, so just in order to keep the um, street at the same width that it currently is consistently throughout Curtis Avenue. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions on that. We have not received any public comment. Uh, and again, this item is eligible for consent if you are all open to that. Anybody have an issue with it being on consent? We will move that one. Uh, next up, we have VAR 2022-033. This is a variant submitted by H Half, H-A-L-F-F, -F, for property located south of 2683 North Quality Lane. The property is zoned CS Community Services and contains approximately 3.1 acres. The requests are uh, a few different variances. Um, they're requesting a variance from uh, from several of our parking standards, um, as well as for our curb radius um, and a couple and one architectural design standard. So they are requesting four variances. Uh, staff is recommending in favor of all four. They are so, the recommendations are somewhat all tied together. So the use on this site, there's an associated LSIP, uh, administratively approved project that's uh, undergoing staff review at this time. Uh, and uh, the clientele that the site will be serving is primarily for individuals uh, with disabilities. Uh, so the first variance that they're requesting is to create um, slightly larger parking spaces. Our typical standards are 9 by 19, and they'd like to make parking spaces that are 10 by 20 uh, to allow for a little bit of additional maneuvering room uh, and for people, uh, individuals getting in and out of their vehicles. They are requesting a variance to the curb radius standards uh, to have a slightly wider curb radius. Uh, the applicant is working with Razorback Transit uh, to actually have this spot be a stop on their route. And again, because of the nature of who the, the organization is serving, uh, they want that bus to be able to make a turn onto the site itself uh, rather than just stop in the street. Uh, and in order to allow for that maneuvering space, they would like that extra, that a slightly wider curb radius in, in order to allow for that. Um, the applicant is also requesting a variance to allow parking in front of the building, which is typically not allowed in our form-based zoning districts. In this particular instance, it is also to serve the unique needs of the clientele they're serving. Uh, the the uh, property's topography slopes uh, significantly as you move to the west. And so basically on the first level, uh, the, the building firstly did receive a Board of Adjustment variance to be built outside of the Build 2 zone uh, back last fall um, due to some floodplain and uh, other considerations. So with that, because of the shift of the building outside of the Build 2 zone, 
uh, they wanted to be able to place that parking in front uh, to allow for uh, stair-free access for the public into the first floor of the suite of the structure since that's where most of the programming is going to happen for the public and then in the rear of the building or to the west side there's another parking lot that serves the second story of the building uh, which is more for employees and staff so staff is recommending in favor of all three of those variances due to who they're serving and why, why the there's a specific need for why why those things are needed in this particular instance uh, the fourth request is for um, they are creating a principal facade that is predominantly metal um, however uh, a good percentage of the metal that they are using is actually a faux wood. Uh, so the appearance of it, uh, we think the intent of that ordinance is still being met because of the overall appearance of the material that they're choosing. It just technically is a metal product, which is why they need to seek a variance. So we are recommending in favor of that variance request as well. We don't think that by granting the variance in this instance, it would undermine the intent of that ordinance. So uh, happy to answer any questions you might have on that. We have not received any public comment. Jesse, I think the last time that we had a uh, request for wider parking stalls was for Sam's Club. I mean, that might not be the last time, the last time I remember. And they kind of did an interesting thing with it where they didn't have, they don't just have a single line. They have a, like a, a double, they have sort of a box between uh, the parking spaces, which helps people uh, actually park in the center, but still have uh, more room around them. Is, is that like an appropriate uh, thing to, to, to request? Um, I think that would be a reasonable condition to attach, yeah. Okay, I'll just bring it up in the meeting. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Oh, that was, uh, can you check and see what the uh, size of the Sam's Club ones ended up being? I can look into it. Thank you. Okay, any other questions on that? Okay, uh, next up we've got LSD 2021-034. This is a large-scale development submitted by Jorgensen and Associates for property located at 685 West Van Ash Drive. The property is zone C3, Central Commercial, and contains approximately 38.72 acres. The request is for a 422-unit multifamily complex with associated parking. Uh, so staff is actually recommending that this item be tabled uh, until the next Planning Commission meeting. Uh, the main reason for that uh, has to do with the proposed uh, traffic counts. Uh, there's still some discrepancies about uh, the, between the traffic study that the applicant provided um, and what city engineering is able to adequately review for. Um, so this is related to a question of a specific variance that the applicant is requesting. So um, the applicant is requesting a variance to create um, two regional link street cross sections as entryways into the development. Uh, staff, staff finds that that may be an overabundance of right of way uh, as to what may actually be needed and where the specific pinch point lies is with uh, North Greg specifically, there's a railroad crossing that city council has um, approved some, uh, approved to construct. And, uh, and so we wanna make sure that the streets are being uh, adequately, you know, adequately developed to serve the overall development and serve the needs, uh, and not be over, uh, not be built to an overcapacity or an undercapacity. So again, on the on the basis that the traffic study isn't isn't fully answering the questions that city engineering needs uh, to kind of understand. Uh, what the variance is after, um, and the fact that staff can't really firmly make a solid foundation of a recommendation, we are recommending it be tabled. Um, we have not received any public comment on it. Uh, one member of the public did have some questions and comments at the subdivision committee meeting, uh, who expressed some concerns about uh, whether any added traffic would uh, affect um, the uh, the hospital, the nearby hospital at all, or, or emergency response times. Uh, and uh, it does not appear that that would be the case at this time, um, that there would be any conflict there. Um, so uh, with that, um, uh, uh, that's, again, basis on the basis of just making sure that that traffic study is all up to snuff and, and adds up. That's the reason why staff is recommending uh, that the item be tabled until the next meeting. But I can answer any questions you might have about any other specifics on the project. 
Jesse, since this is going to be a likely table, um, but it is something that was public notification, can we go ahead and bump this up to the top of new business? So in case anybody wanted to speak on that, they wouldn't be waiting for something that will likely be bumped. Sure. We can move that to the first item of new business. Okay, any other questions about that? Okay, hearing none, uh, that brings us to our next item is LSD 2022-020. This is a large-scale development submitted by Anderson Engineering for property located at 3349 West Weddington Drive. The property is zoned RPZD Residential Plan Zoning District. It contains approximately 1.69 acres. The request is for a 4,450-square-foot uh, 4, drive through car wash and associated parking, and Gretchen Harrison is the planner on this one. So the subject property for this request is located in West Fayetteville at the southeast corner of Weddington Drive and Salem Road. Um, a conditional use permit for a car wash was previously denied by the Planning Commission earlier this year and subsequently appealed to and approved by City Council. A separate variance was approved by the Planning Commission last month, which allowed two 25-foot wide and two 30-foot wide drive aisles within the car wash development. Um, the applicant is now requesting large scale development approval for that car wash. Um, with that request, they have submitted one variance request um, to the Commercial Office of Mixed Use Design Standards. Um, right now, the building is um, oriented along Salem Road, kind of where the driveway shown here is. Um, and they are showing a primary entrance to the north um, facing Weddington, and they do not intend to have an entrance on the west side, since that is where they will have the drive tunnel for the car wash. Um, so they are basically asking to vary from the design requirements to not provide an entrance on that west facade. Um, staff is supportive of the request, finding that it meets um, the use of the site and it promotes pedestrian and vehicular safety and um, uh, maneuvering throughout the site. Um, with the large scale development in general, um, we are recommending approval of that as well. Um, there are, are no real oddballs with this um, development worth mentioning. Um, we did not receive any public comment on the item and we are recommending approval um, with um, in favor of that variance um, that was requested but I could stand for any questions that you may have on this does the Commission have any questions okay next up uh, just double check here yeah <laughs> okay Next up, we have CUP 2022-016. This is a conditional use permit submitted by Tim Schenk for a property located at 3800 North Mall Avenue. The property is zoned C2 Thoroughfare Commercial and contains approximately 5.58 acres. The request is for an off-site stock room or a warehouse for a bath and body work. So uh, this, um, the, the proposal at hand is uh, the applicant is looking to lease out a space in this structure in the rear, kind of in the, in the L, uh, kind of in the crook of the L there uh, of this building. It's about an 800, it's about an 800 square foot uh, space uh, purely for storage and warehousing of goods for an associated bath and body works that just opened up on the uh, west side of North Mall Avenue. Uh, because it's an off-site storage, it would classify as a warehousing use, which is a conditional use in C2. Uh, we are recommending in favor. Uh, we find that the space that they're allocating for is not meant to be a commercial retail space, but is a purely back of, serves a back of house need. Uh, the elevations and available loading uh, and um, uh, and area uh, appear to be adequately screened from view, and uh, we don't think it would be any there would be any adverse effects or negative impacts to the surrounding neighborhoods by allowing this use at this location. Um, we have not received any public comment on it, and I can answer any questions you might have. Is I'm sorry. Is that the bed, bath, and beyond? Uh, so it's for a bath and it's for storage for a bath and body work. So it is behind Bed Bath and Beyond and Old Navy, um, but it's for there's a Bath and Body Works which is at 3827 um, North Mall that's hoping to use this as storage. Gotcha. Thank you. Would anybody have any objection to this going on consent? Um, it is a conditional use permit, so I think it needs As, to stay off. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions on that? Doesn't sound like it. Um, we have 
up for you now, RZN 2022 024. This is a rezoning submitted by Ashley and Jonathan Davis for properties located at 502 South College Avenue. The properties are zoned NC, Neighborhood Conservation, and contain approximately 0.28 acres. The request is to rezone the property to RIU, Residential, Intermediate, Urban, and Gretchen Harrison is the planner on this one. Yes, uh, so the property for this request is located on the east side of College Avenue between MLK and Archibald Yell. Uh, the property contains one parcel, which totals roughly a quarter acre, I and mean, it's currently developed with one single-family dwelling. Um, the applicant is requesting to rezone the property from NC Neighborhood Conservation to RIU Residential Intermediate Urban. Um, they have stated that they are pursuing this rezoning in order to subdivide and redevelop the property. Um, staff is supportive of the applicant's request for RIU here. Um, the site has a relatively high infill score of 8 with a weighted score of 10.5. And, um, and its um, RIU um, uh, is compatible with its designation as a residential neighborhood area and the future land use plans. Um, so we are supportive of the request, finding that it would be an appropriate location for infill. Um, we did not receive any public comment on the item um, or any inquiries, um, but I could stand for any questions that you have on it, we are recommending that it be forwarded to City Council with a recommendation of approval. Um, I, uh, does anyone have any questions on that? It sounds like maybe there might have been some difficulty hearing Gretchen. Yeah, I just, I can barely hear her, Jesse. Okay. okay. Um, louder. Do, do you want to run through that one more time? Just. I can. Okay. Yep. I'm mostly just the end kind of trailed off. Okay, so basically um, staff is supporting the rezoning to RIU um, for this site. It's an appropriate location for infill. It has a high infill score and it's consistent with our future land use plans. Um, so we are recommending that it be forwarded to city council with a recommendation of approval and we did not receive any public comment on it. Um, are there any further questions on that? Okay, hearing none, uh, we have RZN 2022-025. This is a rezoning submitted by Earth Plan Design Alternatives for property located at 507 South Church Avenue. The property is zoned NC Neighborhood Conservation and contains 0.2 acres. The request is to rezone the property to DG Downtown General. Question, I don't know if it's helpful. If you want to come sit here. If I can, this is my last while to speak loudly. Okay. Um, so the subject property for this request is located on the west side of Church Avenue between Archibald Yell and Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Um, the site contains roughly 0.17 acres. It's currently developed with one single family dwelling. Um, it's located within the planning area for the 71B corridor, as well as the Walker Park master plan area. Um, and it received its current zoning designation of NC as a result of that Walker Park neighborhood plan in 2008. Um, the applicant is requesting to rezone the property to DG, Downtown General. Um, they have shared in their request letter that the rezoning would allow them to um, develop a fourplex development on this site um, and link it with the property to the west along Locust Avenue. Um, staff is supportive of the applicant's request to rezone the site to DG. Um, while it is in a area that is primarily single family residential in nature, um, staff finds that the site has a relatively high infill score of 10 with a weighted score of 10 and a half. Um, and it's um, compatible with the surrounding area. Um, most of the, all of the properties to the west are zoned DG and most to the north are as well. Um, DG would allow for some greater variety in housing types um, and densities, and it would also allow for some um, small-scale commercial and non-residential uses. Um, we did not receive any public comment on the item, um, but I could stand for any questions that you may have. We are recommending that it be forwarded to City Council with a recommendation of approval. Would the, uh, uh, the driveway connections through these a way for Fifth Avenue to um, come through there, or, or is this more just like parking lot to parking lot connection? Um, there is platted street right of way just to the north of the lot here. It does not extend all the way to Locust, um, but there could be potential to extend Fifth Street as a public road through there. Any any other questions? Okay, um, hearing none, 
We will then go to our last item is RZN 2022-026. This is a rezoning submitted by Will Kelstrom for properties located at 2015 South Vale Avenue. Properties are zoned NSG, Neighborhood Services General, and contain approximately 3.5 acres. The request is to rezone the properties to CS Community Services. And Ryan Umberger is the planner on this one. Thank you. Um, this property is in South Fayetteville. Um, it is zoned NSG, Neighborhood Services General, and approximately three and a half acres in size. Uh, this property is currently developed with a 1,416 square foot single family dwelling that was built in 1956. Um, this property has had a couple of uh, fairly recent um, development applications uh, come through. Um, most recently, there was a request to um, vacate the alley right of way that extends to the north property line. Um, that, that request was forwarded by the Planning Commission and um, will be going to City Council once they've been able to uh, uh, complete in an adjacent um, consent form. Uh, the, uh, also this year, uh, in February of this year, the, the properties received their current zoning designation. So some of you might remember um, uh, towards the end of last year, the Planning Commission reviewed an item uh, that was uh, that rezoned the property from um, community services to neighborhood services general. So with this, this rezoning request basically just represents a return to the um, previous zoning. Um, the applicant uh, suggested in their, their request letter that um, their, their intent is still to develop the properties as, as they had originally proposed, um, but they ran into some issues with the, the NSG zoning in terms of the land area per dwelling unit that was required by that zoning district. Um, we have not received any public comment on this item, and I can stand for any questions that you have. Are there any questions on this? Is the property around it downtown general? The property around it, I think the, the zoning varies. Um, I don't have that right in front of me, but I can definitely get that for you by the meeting. It should also be included in the maps uh, that are attached to your packet. Oh, that's right. It's CS to the south and the RMF 24 to the north, so it's got a mix there. Um, any further questions? Okay, well, uh, hearing none, seeing none, um, that, uh, that would conclude the um, agenda session uh, meeting. And with that, a reminder to the commission that you do have long range committee meetings starting right after this. So with that, we will adjourn the uh, agenda session and resume long range. <laughs>